So ladies and gentlemen, after this, it is time to move on to the next session. Well, ensuring a wholesome consumer experience while catering to changing consumer patterns can be tricky. But our next brand, which started in 2018, is definitely doing something right to be succeeding amongst those with the competition to have to become a unicorn in this process earlier this year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now joined by Dhruv Dandraj Bal, the Chief Operating Officer of Bharat Pay, to share his insights on the better consumer experience, a game changer for companies. With this, uh, welcoming Dhruv uh, on the stage and screen. Thank you, Dhruv, for your valuable time. With this, the stage and screen is all yours. I hope you're doing great today. I'm great, Bhavna. Thank you so much. Uh, and you guys seem to be having an amazing session. Um, I, I didn't think I would enjoy uh, Snapchat that much. I've never used it. But now I think after that last presentation, I'm definitely going to be picking it up and using it. And maybe even considering adding... Um, as he said, a camera to our brand strategy. Uh, but that was, that was very insightful. Thank you so much. Um, great to be here. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting topic that we've picked up, right? Um, uh, it's very volatile times, very uncertain times. Uh, things are changing. Um, and uh, in these changing times, um, you know, we, we necessarily want to sort of build um, build you know excellence in consumer experiences um, that that transcend that, that transcend uh, in, in some regards be, you know the transactional nature but create a brand identity and create uh, something that people can associate themselves with um, and especially in financial services that that becomes extremely relevant right? Um, so I'd like to just put on my presentation. If you'd give me a second, um, would you guys be putting, uh, why don't I just put that up and share my screen? Just give me a second. Show through. Just share my screen. Okay. So, uh, so financial services, um, and, and brand in financial services. I mean, I mean, this is, this is very interesting. Um, and, and brand as a function of what it becomes because of consumer experience and or customer experience and how that becomes a game changer. So uh, just to give you a little background about Bharat Pay, we're a three and a little over three year old company um, backed by some of the marquee investors. We're in the financial services world. We started with the QR payments. Uh, from there, we went into POSTs, we went into lending, uh, we now do deposits. Um, very recently, people heard about our foray into the banking world with a joint venture partnership with Centrum and the launch of the Unity um, Small Finance Bank. Um, you also heard about us getting into the consumer space with BNPL, uh, which is Buy Now, Pay Later, through our brand called PostPay, which was all over the place during the uh, T20 World Cup. Um, so we're, we're doing, a, you know, we're doing everything. Um, someone recently said, hey, you guys are like the SpaceX of financial services. You're doing everything in a very short period of time. And I think that's the best compliment we could have had. Um, so uh, we're doing a lot. Uh, but at the core of it um, our, is our customer. Our customer is two types. One is the merchant, which is our established business, which is what Bharat Pay is. Um, and uh, the, the other is the consumer, the newer BNPL uh, credit deposit 12% club features that we are launching. Uh, but at the end of the day, even our merchant business, we behave like a B2C business for, for us. Everyone's a, um, a customer. So what we call MX, which is merchant experience or CX, which is consumer experience um, put together is, is one entity and that's how we focus on it. Um, but to take you into that world, let me tell all of you a little bit, uh, a small story. Um, so um, when you look at customer experience, there is a metric called NPS. Um, NPS tracks, um, you know, how many people are truly promoters um, of your brand, uh, what's the strength of the word of mouth of your brand, how many people do go and talk great things about your brand. Unlike customer satisfaction scores where there is an above average or a below average, um, NPS sort of differentiates people who are truly promoters or people who are really high up on that scale of satisfaction or who've had a wow experience. Um, and it actually says anyone with an average or just above a, uh, average experience is, is not going to be someone who 
um, is going to promote your brand, but there will be negative word of mouth. So it's not that because they're because they're not satisfied, they won't even talk about your brand. They will actually take people away from your brand. And and so the the ratio of you know um, the people of who are promoting your brand versus who are detracting from your brand becomes that uh, target NPS. Um, it's very easy to think about you know brands that have this very visceral um, uh, customer experience that people enjoy. Um, and hence become promoters of it. Um, I'm an, you know, as they call uh, an Apple fanboy. Um, so uh, Apple is one of those products that people love. Um, it could be in cars, it could be an Audi, a Mercedes or a BMW. Uh, but do you like, you know, I would love if this was a live audience, I would have, you know, asked people to put up their hands and tell me, can you guess which is the brand um, that is, uh, that is the highest NPS in the world? Um, and very interestingly, let me show that to you. The highest NPS in the world actually belongs to an insurance company. Um, and that's very, very surprising for people um, who track consumer experience, customer experience, um, and, and the world of it. Because there's, there's three reasons why um, insurance is actually a, is a terrible um, industry to, to deliver of our experience. Uh, first... Uh, you pay for um, you pay for a product uh, upfront that you may or may not consume. So insurance claim rates are virtually four to five percent. So ninety five percent of the people who pay for something don't actually claim it. And also when they're buying that product, they have to imagine the worst that could happen to them. So it's not a great experience. It's not like buying a 75 inch Samsung TV and thinking about the amazing Avengers movie that you're going to watch again on it. Um, it's actually, uh, you know, thinking about, oh my God, if I was in a car and my car got totaled, would it be insured? What if I died in that? Would my family be taken care of? Uh, so you're thinking about the worst thing and you're paying upfront for, for your biggest fear. The second thing is, you only interact with insurance customers when something bad really happens. So something really bad happens, that's when they reach out to you. Um, otherwise, you never hear from, uh, you know, insurance insurers and insurer custom, uh, customers who buy insurance don't interact with each other. The third is most laws in most countries um, are written such that uh, it's in the favor of the insurer. So they are actually protected by law to not pay um, pay claims. So there, there is a lot of fine print that can allow an insurer not to pay their, um, uh, pay their customers. Now, in such a situation where you've gone to someone, paid the money up front for your worst fear, um, you reach out to them in your moment of need, and they don't come through, um, that's just such a terrible uh, uh, customer experience to, to go through. Even then, Allianz as a company um, ranked the highest. Um, when you know Allianz started trying to discover what was going on, what they weren't, they were so confused about what they were doing right. They actually hired a big management consulting company to come in there and figure it out. Um, and that management consulting company actually came out and they started studying, you know, um, all the data and all the call centers and all the claims. And they found that there was this one agent in their call center um, who was consistently performing better than everyone else. Um, and this wasn't when they were the best NPS. This was when they were somewhere in the middle, but they wanted to get better. Um, and when they went to that agent, they found that this was a, you know, German middle-aged agent male sitting in some call center in Germany um, uh, doing auto claims. So when people would call him when they got into an auto accident. And what was very interesting was like people give him, give him very high satisfaction scores. And, the, and it was not because his claim rate was higher or he was paying more reimbursements. Uh, none of that was true. What, what he was doing was the minute someone called uh, in, the first thing he said was, are you okay? I can see on your file that you're married, you have kids. Is your family okay? Are your children okay? Were they with you? Do you want me to call someone? The first five or 10 minutes of that call, he only spent in ascertaining uh, so the emotional, the mental, and the physical health uh, of that individual before he went into the claim experience. And that was enough for them to decide that this is what we're going to do for the rest um, of our customer base across the world. So if you now call any Allianz uh, uh, you know, call center, the first thing they ask about, inquire about, is you, your health, what are you calling for? So if it's a health insurance and you're calling to claim, um, uh, you know, uh, let's say, you know, you or your uh, spouses had a baby and, and you're calling to claim that um, 
uh, uh, claim for the child, they'll actually congratulate you first. They'll ask about the child's name. They'll they'll uh, say everything is okay. How healthy is the baby? Are there no issues? Um, if you're calling regarding, uh, you know, um, a, a sort of a shop fire, they'll sort of say, is your is your fire okay? How are you running your house? Um, you, have you figured out where you're living? Were you living in the same shop? So on and so forth. So the experience is something that they've sort of standardized and institutionalized. Um, and so that's that's something that you know they did and and what you started seeing was that level of customer centricity and that level of real, realization that everything isn't transactional there are there is a lot of eq led on top emotional quotient led on top of your um you know business to consumer b2c relationship that you that you uh, deploy is what it is what was there so um we started asking that same question saying, um, okay, what is it that, you know, people actually expect of a financial services brand um, and especially a digital financial services brand. Um, and, and we actually came up, you know, we, we, did, we ran a pretty massive survey um, across our customer base. And what we realized by condensing the entire voice of customer that we collected was um, three things. Um, they want trust, uh, they want uh, accountability and responsibility, and they want excellence. And I'll just touch on all three uh, with regards to financial services. So when it says talks about trust, um, they want trust about data security. They want trust about uh, that the money when collected will go through, the, that your success rates are high, that when they want the money, the money will come back to them. Uh, that, for example, if they were investing uh, the money with Bharat Pay at the 12% um, rate of interest that we do, which is a market-changing product, uh, but it's in the P2P lending space. So there are certain inherent risks, the trust that we are upfront about those risks, but also that we have put enough checks and balances in place to prevent you know, any losses that would come across. Uh, come across. Um, similarly, on accountability and responsibility, really you know, being proactive and reaching out to them, telling them that, look, this went wrong, we are fixing it, we'll come back to you. Um, I think a brand that does this beautifully in the financial services space is um, Zeroda. I think, uh, you know, a big shout out to uh, Nitin and Nikhil for what they've built. Um, you know, they, they proactively reach out and explain when something goes wrong, even if it has nothing to do with them, even if there's a problem at the exchange, they take responsibility for it by saying, look, it happened to, it happened with the exchange, but because you're using our platform, we are as responsible for, uh, for this problem. And we're accountable to you to explain to you what happened and we will. And I think excellence, uh, you know, is, um, you know, people tend to think about the word like excellence is always wow. I think excellence can also be uh, condensed into a very simple um, word. I think that's called consistency. So if you can do something consistently without error the same way, that's the only way you can uh, repeat, uh, repeat that transaction or repeat that behavior. And that's the only way you can scale. So if it's repeatable and it's scalable, then only it will be sustainable. Um, and for that, excellence is extremely important. Uh, you know, so we took this at Bharat Pay um, and we actually uh, leveraged this to create it as a growth tool at Bharat Pay. So our, our mission became, how do we improve experience um, so that we solve three problems? Problem number one, uh, our word of mouth increases. So our cost of customer acquisition reduces because people start telling each other about the product. We don't have to send very big feet on the street. Um, recently, there was an article about how one of our competitors has nearly one and a half lakh people um, in the field trying to acquire customers and acquire merchants. And, and we, we run a pretty lean ship, um, even, even though we're giving them uh, you know, a run for the money in the market in terms of market share or wallet share. Um, so, so we realized that you know, the, the word of mouth, the advocacy of the brand, its products, its services is what is going to fundamentally um, lead us into a uh, into a more efficient customer acquisition uh, pipeline. The second uh, the second piece of it was around uh, success, technological success. So the fact that our product can go through, that our uh, uh, that our services are foolproof, or at least 
you know, have an uptime of let's say 99.9%. Um, and if something were to go wrong, um, that brings us to the third part, which is where we are proactive. And we, we, know, we know what it is, we identify it, we communicate it. Um, so, so as we started building these levels of acquisition, um, you know, uh, consistency and, and sort of, you know, proactive service or proactive reach out and proactive communication, um, we, we built a two-phase approach. So till about January this year, which is the first two and a half years of Bharat Pay's existence, um, we were, you know, we were growing very fast. We were growing, uh, you know, uh, roughly to the tune of, you know, uh, eight to 10 X a year, um, every year, the first year was even significantly higher. And then what we saw was that, look, in this situation, we were continuously building new products. Just last year, um, we launched um, lending, swipe, deposits, card, uh, our debit card, credit card, um, our post pay, um, and our 12% club. So all of our big products got launched in the last 12 to 15 months. Um, so, and that too, during the peak of the pandemic. So what we really saw was that as smaller programs tended to grow, uh, we would start experiencing these problems. Um, and we were reactive and we had to go and, you know, sort of solve these problems, be curative in our approach. So that phase one, what we started doing was we would pick up a problem um, and we would first say, how can I eliminate this problem? So we did a four-step process. How can this problem not come to our customer? For example, if I have applied for a loan, but my loan is currently on hold because you require me to do more transactions on the platform because I don't have a very strong Sybil score, but you will give me the loan, but only when I continue to use the Bharat Pay QR and your, and you know, as a company, we use payment data as a signal to underwrite so as we get more signals, we're more sure about that loan and we're able to give it off. How do you communicate that? Um, are the communication channel working? So we saw, for example, that um, you know, the app page did not give enough information. So people were calling in or uh, the SMSs that went out weren't very well written. So we improved the copy of those SMSs to make the message clearer or that the messages that went out were not in regional languages. Uh, you know, uh, they were written in Hindi or English. And we, we realized that, you know, a lot of our base was coming from, um, from the south of the country, from the west of the country. So we started changing, you know, introducing a lot of these changes. And as we did that, we, we brought down the incidence of, uh, you know, certain kinds of cases. Now, imagine we're not able to completely eliminate it and the person still needs some help. Uh, what happens? They call a call center and then they go through the whole process. What we did was we actually took a page out of Zomato's book and we built a very, very good um, chatbot system. This chatbot system works um, both within our app, but also works on WhatsApp. So we have a strategic partnership with Facebook and WhatsApp. And the same experience that you get within the app, if a customer say, uh, if a merchant says hi to us, they get that same experience. So the all app says hi, um, and we'll say hi, what, how can we help you? And they'll say, uh, okay, what were my, when did I last get my money from you guys? How much money have I collected this month? And then we'll just send them a summary saying, okay, in the last 30 days, or in the month of November, you collected so many payments and all of these payments were, were, were deposited in your bank account on these, 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 and these dates. Um, so that, that clarity of, of sort of trust is there. And then, you know, if they open the app, the same information was available. So, you know, you don't, if you're not able to eliminate it, if it comes in, you self-serve. But let's say even then, uh, we, we live in India where people like to hear someone's voice, where they like to speak to someone, they want to put a name and a voice to a problem and who's giving them the answer. So they will, they will then still want to speak to a call center uh, agent. And at that point in time, when the call center agent picks up the phone, um, the worst experience in the world today is um, you have to start explaining the same problem all over again, which you might have explained, you know, might have typed in the chat board or had, had a WhatsApp chat with someone, or you'd explain it to the previous agent. So what we did was we created something called the persona world. So now if Dhruv um, calls into the call center, they know that Dhruv it uses the QR actively, um, has never applied for a loan. So if I press loan on my on, on my IVR in at the call center, the person who picks up the phone and says, okay, sir, the only problem you could be experiencing is that you don't understand a loan application or don't know how to apply for it, which is it, which of the two it is. If you understand the loan, I'll help you apply it. If you don't understand it, let me send you a WhatsApp, read it on your own time. I'll also send you a video on how to apply from the app. It's all self-serve. 
and even then you want to call back feel free then i'll 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 assist you on that so by targeting uh, the solution to the to what the other person was looking for um and and really just answering their question right off the bat um, we actually track a metric called first time resolution um so what we what we track is like how many times did we answer the right question off the bat as soon as the phone got picked up and that number is over the last two years has gone from something like 60 percent to uh you know 85 86 percent now um so then you ask me where does the remaining 14 percent go the 14 percent is not that we don't get the right answer the 14 percent is that the front line is not enabled for that answer because we still have uh, newer products, products that are evolving. Um, we sometimes experience technical bugs. Sometimes there are bank outages. Sometimes there are platform outages. So that's where we, you know, have an escalation team. So if a call came in, that call immediately gets escalated through. Uh, so we have a ticketing system within the company. It immediately goes to the tech team and the product team of that product or service, whether it is lending, QR, swipe, card. Um, and, and the various, uh, you know, seven to 10 other products that we have, and it will go to that team, that team will immediately pick it up. And then there is a dedicated person in that team to just do problem solving. So they drop all businesses as usual work um, or anything new that they're building. And they first fix the problem that the, that, that the merchant or the customer is experiencing. And I think that that's also been one of our tools to drive customer centricity and customer first behavior within our employees as well telling them that it's not just the salespeople who are on the ground who are responsible uh, for, for what's happening um, or the call center guy who picks up the phone because such bad boli jai to, you know, Ashneer often says this uh, to us, right? Doi log gali khate company mein, ya to call center wala ya sales wala jo ground pe hai. Um, so, so it's not their ownership only, it's everyone across the board. And so that's what we did. Um, about a year ago, we realized that, you know, uh, this was a very interesting problem, but we were still solving everything downstream the way we were approaching. All our, all our KPIs were good, our OKRs were good, the metrics were great, uh, but it seemed like, you know, we were still sort of catching babies in the river. Um, I'll tell you a small story. There are two friends walking along a river. Uh, suddenly they see a baby, um, you know, being swept downstream in the river. So both of them jump in, uh, grab the baby, bring it to shore. Um, suddenly they see another baby. So one of them jumps in um, and, and helps the baby. There's another baby they see. So they jump, the other friend jumps in and, and, you know, they do this seven, eight, 10 times. Suddenly they see another baby coming. One friend jumps in and one starts running up the river. So he says, Hey, where are you going? We need to save the baby. He says, no, I want to first go stop that idiot who's throwing babies into the river. So, so, you know, really that's, that, that's what the realization that we had. That was our Eureka moment. Um, and, and we decided to sort of, uh, you know, go upstream um, and, and, you know, I'll just plug in one of my favorite books. It's, um, it's written by uh, Dan Heath called Upstream. And this is the, the story is in the first chapter. And I picked it up from there. Uh, when I read that book, that was the epiphany I had. Um, so we, we changed our strategy. What we started doing was we have now put in um, triggers into every product where what we have clearly identified and said is, look, in every product, there are a few adverse events that can happen. So for example, if you're using our 12% investment product, if you added the money and the money got cut from your bank, but didn't get added to your 12% club, um, then for us, that is an adverse event. If you try to withdraw the money and the money didn't hit your bank account, or you didn't get the funds credited and we didn't get a confirmation from the bank that the funds have been given to you, that is, uh, that is an adverse event. Uh, you try to log into the app and you're not able to log in. That is an adverse event. So we started tracking all the adverse events in the company. Um, and, and we have a very clear tracker of, of that. And every time an adverse event um, happens, we start an omni-channel communication. So depending on, so we have something called like a karma score, which is the goodness of the merchant score. So if it's a very high karma score merchant, we basically go back to that merchant and we say, hey, um, you know, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you're a very good merchant for us. You're experiencing this problem. And maybe that person gets a phone call or even a visit from our sales, sales agent. Uh, but, but another person who's an infrequent user of our product might just get a WhatsApp or um, an SMS um, from us and says, 
hey, you, you might have experienced this problem. Uh, we're, we're on it. We're trying to fix it. And if it doesn't get fixed in the next 24 hours, we'll call you. Otherwise, if it's fixed, we'll just inform you over WhatsApp. Um, so so that the whole, um, you know, parametrically triggered events leading to automated communication channels and automatic task allocation to individuals saying, okay, this happened to individual A, so you must go and do task X with them um, is something that, that, that sort of um, uh, we experience. So, uh, that's that's really been our journey. So what we've seen is um, we've actually seen um, at one point about two years ago uh, our for for every hundred merchants who were active on our platform, um, twenty you know twenty five percent of them used to reach out to us. Today that number is close to seven percent. So in the last two years we've brought that incidence rate down significantly. Um, that's a huge cost reduction, but it's also a great customer experience that we've given, um, especially um, during the pandemic when people have already have anxiety, when people already have stresses of not just whether the business is going to come or not come, or if it comes, how am I going to manage it, but also of their personal health and safety. During that time, we, we took it on ourselves to continuously make our service better so that their anxiety and of, of managing their money at least um, wasn't there. Um, and because of that, we've seen a significant growth. So today uh, we have seven and a half million, about 75 lakh uh, merchants on our base. At any point in time, uh, more than half of them are using one of our product um, we have close to 25, uh, uh, 25 to 30 lakh of them just active on our QR and swipe um, uh, payment businesses. And as I said, we, we, we behave like a data science company. We don't charge for payments. So all of that data enables us to then uh, help these merchants with capital needs, uh, which is primarily give them loans through our unsecured lending program, um, through our uh, distributed retail lending programs, gold loan, um, and a couple of other uh, lending programs that we're about to launch. But also there are merchants who are flush with cash um, and they're looking for better returns and we give them a 12% investment uh, product. Um, we also give them a card with, where they can easily use the funds that they collect at their own convenience, both offline and online. And we've also now allowed them to choose between a debit and a credit option on, on, on that card. Um, so, so, you know, we've, we've, cons we've not only built great products, but we've also built, tried to build great experience across each product and gone deep into that. Um, uh, and, I, and I fundamentally believe that's been a huge driver of our growth uh, across the board. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's the story that I wanted to share with all of you. And uh, just to you know, end that note, um, we recently did an NPS um, and uh, some of the leading banks in the private banks in the country um, have an NPS in the range of 55 to 60. Um, Bharat Pay, very interestingly, uh, we thought we, you know, we we're very self-critical. Um, we thought we will be uh, you know, in the negative range. Um, but actually, we have one of the best um, NPSs in, in, you know, in the country, in the, in the financial services domain. Um, so I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the crux is that what we have been doing um, as a strategy, as a way of life, um, we call it the Bharat Pay way, um, has, has worked out very well for us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Dhruv. What a wonderful, uh, you know, journey you've shared and so many insights we've got from your session. Once again, a big thank you. No, absolutely, absolutely. I'm happy to take any questions if there are. Um, no, so uh, through uh, we're falling in short of time. Uh, apologies great, on that. Uh, great. Hopefully, talked. hopefully, I didn't keep you guys too long. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you so much.